Hello there! This is Kisu102 and this is Cafe Root Chapter 6. I. Let's go. This is gonna be about Damien. I don't know, I remember. Last one was about Candace and. And Candace didn't do nothing. Well, she was suspicious, but she didn't do anything special. Now let's go. Maybe they just wanna dry everyone before it. The cartoon. This <laughs> the cartoon. The story ends. Welcome to the cafe, Ruth. How may I help you? It was another usual day at the cafe. The brilliant sunshine beat down on the tables with a scintillating, brilliant shine, as the cafe sign swung in the lingering breeze. Those words. People came to and fro, to and for. Yeah, wasn't by the red scarlet door much more than usual today. Of course, that was to be expected. Today was going to be a special night. Oh, it's the jazz night. Yeah, since the horrible incident, the jazz night has been postponed till further notice. It didn't take too much persuasion convincing the band to come back, despite their reluctance. After all, what place had a stage as grand as the cafe room? Hello, how may I help you today? And yet, and in spite of all the recent happenings, I'm surprised myself I still came back here. One way or another, I was drawn to this place, whether it's beauty, it's liveliness, or it's sheer feeling of nostalgic happiness. It's because you're a vampire. I couldn't describe it. Hmm, I should be getting back inside soon. Carrying my tray full of empty glasses, I walked back down the tall door. Whatever was going to happen, was going to happen. But then I, I was gonna forget myself in the luscious music of sweet jazz. That sounds awesome. Here, some more glasses, Aldo. Clean them up. I don't know what that means. Heading out toward the door, Aldo sure suddenly grabbed my hand. Wait, wait, I, I think I'll be needing some help. Whistle. Uh, Take a break from taking order and help me in the kitchen, please? Oh, sure. Obrigado. Whatever that means. Oh, minigame out. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's start this right. Let's put a mini game at the beginning. All right, so let's try this. Drawing it. I'll never know what is the right order to put all these ingredients in. I'll just shop them in. I don't even know what we are doing today. Oh, we're doing muffins. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing muffins. Forgot. I was talking and I didn't see what what I was bringing. That's fine. I will nap. Make it. I'll never make it. it just happens that way. <laughs> Where did my music go? I cannot do this without music. Without music, this this game is nothing. God, I thought I could make it. Click the scoop butter out of the bowl and click to drop on the pan. All right. Ah, uh, this is gonna take a while. I could take a bigger spoon, but no. Let's do it the difficult way. Why not? Like all in life. Up, up, what? Get in there. There you go. And I'm gonna make it. Oh my god! Uh, I've noticed. Uh, what? 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 What was that? <laughs> that's that. That suddenly got too complicated. All right, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna do this. God, that was super complicated. Okay, let's go. This muffin, it smells absolutely delish. Yeah, it took me like 30 minutes to bake them, man. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go here. No, this is the kitchen. Sorry. Let's go here. Oh, God. Come there. You do the way I do. Come there. You say you love me too. Exercise your prerogative. Just respond and be affirmative. Your vacillation has my head in a mess. So please don't make me guess Confess Baby, confess
Oh god, that was pretty good! Alright. The dining hall was crowded tonight. Standing in the dark, I stood concealed from the assembly of vampires seen amongst the round tables of gold. Even though it was pretty far back, I was thankful the music was loud enough the, to echo throughout the dining hall to reach my ears. <coughs> Sorry. Haha, <laughs> playing hockey during the ship, kiddo. I waved my head around and started. Oh, Chris, jeez, you sure scared me there. Scared me. <laughs> Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. Are you just playing hockey to watch the performance? Too? Hooky. I'm so tired of serving beer to my regular drunks. Honestly, people don't have glasses at and H. The small talk soon died off as we both turned our attention to the stage. We clapped our hands, applauding as the band started another number. By then, my mind was completely gone, sucking by the energy of the glass notes. It was really surprising when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Is this? He grabbed my hand suddenly. Well, what? Pulling me towards him. Chris, what are you? We've been co workers for a while now, haven't we, sis? Oh, this must be sitting? But talking with you and working with you? Oh my god, my dream is coming true. <laughs> I come to like you quite a lot. What do you mean I don't. I, is there my any chance you feel the same? Will you go out with me? My god gave opening complete shock. I had no idea Cross toggled me this way. He continued to smile at me, clutching my hand so I couldn't turn away. All I could do was stand there, speechless, as the blood rushed from my head, flushing my friends. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> oh my god, no, no, you gotta be so kidding me! You gotta be definitely kidding me. This, this is like... <sighs> you know, Balin is a nice guy. I really like him. He's like best friend ever. He's like, he's, you can, he's supportive. He, he's awesome. But, but Chris, Chris. Oh my. <sighs> this is the worst day of my life. This is like the worst day of my life. I'm gonna cry. Oh god. No. You gotta be kidding me. Oh no. No, no, no. Alright. Let's go. Let's continue with this. I'll, I'll get over it. I'll get over it. Yep. Yep. Just a day or two. Gotta forget. Well. I. I looked away, avoiding his eyes. Literally, I was speechless. What could I say to him? My hands are back and forth, trying to restock myself with the glow of the yellow lights. This is so sudden. He laughed. He's so beautiful. Don't you like me, sis? We've been good friends, haven't we? I do like you. I do. But my thoughts wander off. Why are you doing this to me? While well, face comes to my mind as I continue to look down, completed a way to put Chris down easily. God, no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just so light. <laughs> Just thinking of a battle in my car race. What if he's rejected like I'm rejecting Chris now? He's not, he says. Don't, don't be stupid. The thought of it made my guts turn. <sighs> I think I'm realizing now. There's someone else right there. <sighs> Why are you doing this to me, man? Why are you doing this to me? Is it on Michael's boy? Yes, it is. I, I, I... <sighs> Everybody knows him. He's formerly quite infamous, you know, Valentino's his name, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's my best. I look down, I'll be able to smile on my face, you really yes or look and not talk about him. Yeah, he's really cute, he flashes all the time, I feel so bad about him building his family and social name, which I'm afraid since that gear. He's probably always play with us when we are gone, so when I'm not sure we become such friends. Haha, <laughs> you're looking around and make sure this doesn't get her. Yeah. 
This is a shame it looks when you're taken. Yeah. It's perfectly fine. <sighs> he bad my bag and let go of my fingers. I should be getting back to the bar. Maybe you should get back to the kitchen. Maybe you should die, Jesus. Waving Chris walk off, leaving me in a dark corner. The blood still lingered on my face as I stood along with my thoughts of a ballad. What if he does reject me? He does reject me. I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna be so, so happy. It, this game. It's gonna be the best game ever if he does. Just wanted to be friends. He just. Ah! And now you give me this. Now you give me. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. Ah, come on. Seriously. Stupid caffeine, stupid work, and stupid vampires, and I got home and I didn't even know it. <sighs> okay. The glaring sun greeted me. I could barely feel my fingers, stretching my arms in the usual morning ritual. Something was off. Yes, the air felt weird. Humid, just dry. Did I have a fever? My hand reached to my forehead, waiting with bated breath. No, my temperature felt normal. Weird. Whatever, I should head to school. The weather felt so dry today, unusually so. Ignoring the uncomfortable atmosphere, I watched my clan to and fro to the classroom. That was a rainbow. Everybody stand for the pledge with as much leverage as I can. I rose from my seat, reciting the same words I repeated every morning. My gaze wandered down to my desk, not caring to look at the flag. Ow! I turned to stone. Automatic look in my eyes start to the source. A classmate stood in the fat corner with a small paper cut on her index finger. The drop was tiny, dripping millimeter by millimeter down her skin. I wanted to puke. Miss Black? Hey, is this are you okay? I was rolling up my body gave in. The black flung into my vision, and the lights went out in my mind. You're just hungry. Like Really, really hungry. The life of the nurse's office blinded me. Blinking several times, I lift off the bed covers. The nurse was right next to me, checking in my glucose level with one of those diabetes thingies. Oh gosh, it was so much worse today. I feel so sick. That's nice, dear. They have you eat your medication now. With her nimble fingers, she dropped two small pills into my palms, leaving me with a cup of water in one hand. She left to care for the others. Uh, I didn't want to eat them, but if I didn't, I'd probably still have this horrible headache. Ugh, I slipped the pills on the, on the table, pulling the covers back over my head. Everything feels so groggy, despite everything I tried. Closing my eyes, I tried to fall asleep. Is this? I recognize that voice. Balling! <sighs> Balling. Pulling my cover off, I'll leave myself a little bit. Bal, what are you doing here? Sitting down beside me, he took my hand in his. I gotta kick you in the face! Are you okay? Yeah, I just fainted again. Some stupid idiot cut her finger. Hey! 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 hey. Wait a second. It was not her fault. Well, it was her fault to get cut, cut, but you don't have to be mean to her just because she got cut and you had problems from it. Yeah, you see, you don't have to call her an idiot. It's that these things happens, is is people people get paper cuts. Yeah? And 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 you don't This is you're so stupid. Whatever. It was such a tiny drop of blood, but it made me so nauseous. 
My head felt weird still, but with pollen here, everything felt better. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. It was my medicine. Which remind me, by the way, Val, where did you get my pills? Did you steal some from the nurse's office? That was the most likely explanation. No, he says you already know he is a vampire. Why can't you just, like, use your brain for a little bit? W well, the dog cracked open. It was the nurse. Uh, What? <laughs> hide ball and quick! And hide ball and fast! Whoa! Uh, I don't need to hide him. I can do it quick, or I can do it fast. This is this is funny. I just forget about the incident with Chris with these options. Yeah, it just made me happy again. All right, so let's let's hide him um, fast. Yeah, sure, fast. But Val, without thinking, I pull him over my covers with me. The mass of my body shape with mine made the bed look a beast. Hopefully, the nurse wouldn't notice. Hi, hi. Your fake snoring sucks. The nurse woke in. There was an awkward silence as I continued to fix snore. She could probably tell I was faking. You don't need to, like, <laughs> snore at all. Dear, eat your pills soon. If you need me, I'll come shortly. The door closed behind him. Picking open a night light, we were still for another five minutes. Well, that, that's a lot of time. Yeah, we were alone. I was about to get up when I realized something. The blood rushed up to my face as I professed what kind of provocative position we were in. Yeah, I can imagine. Valen was at the top of me, his face in my bosom, while our legs were entangled with each other's. Miss, his face was rather than mine. Well, that was awkward. This is still awkward. He's <laughs> crumbling up me. Valen turned his back while I clutched the bedsheets. Uh, silence was spread throughout as we both tried to calm down, and our faces still bright red. With nothing else to do, I reached for my pills. I should eat them, like, right now. Wait! He slapped my hand. <laughs> Stop it! He slapped my hand as I reached out. What? 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 The next thing he did was really surprising. Lifting his hand up, he bit himself hard. Well then, where are you? Leaning toward me, he cupped my face in one hand. His face leaned in slowly until he finally pressed his lips against mine. He's giving me blood. No, he's giving me blood. I was surprised at first, but then I said prolonging, I gave in. I couldn't concentrate on anything except for the melting sen sensation. His tongue traced along the lines of my lips, and I obliged opening them. There was a fine taste in my mind as I did so. I ignored it at first, but then I realized that putrid taste was... Ugh. Blood. I gasped, breaking out the kiss. Coughing, I spat out the blood, coughing uncontrollably. What, what are you? Are you crazy? What are you thinking? Bell's face was stricken with disappointment. He looked incredibly sad, like his hopes had been dashed. I softened, watching the tears suddenly leak off of his eyes. Paul, he didn't answer, blowing his head into my lap, crying. I hate you. I bit his auburn hair, trying to comfort him. Do, do you ever think about the future? What? Paul wiped away the tears, lifting up his face to look at me. Let's run away. What? Let's run away together. After we got a high school and go to Las Vegas. Well, do you hear yourself right now? You sound like some crazy lunatic. What was he thinking? And what was he saying all this? The obvious answer alerted me, despite the kiss. I don't want to go to stupid dating progress. Can you go out with me? He gripped my hands, pulling me into an embrace. I want to marry you. I want to make you love. What? What? I want to make love to you. I don't want to sit on that porch someday with our kids and while holding our hands, watching the sunset. I love you, Isis. Do you know that? From the first episode, then. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. Balan continued to hold on to me, his hands stroking my hair. Vampires can watch sunsets? <laughs> I'll give you that one, Isis. Well, then I'm a different vampire. I don't need my mom. We can do everything ourselves. You can get a job, and I can be a football star and go to the big bowl. We'll be rich. I mean, do you feel the same, Mrs? Go! Go! What was he doing? Give me promises that he never 
He knew he couldn't keep. So that's so crazy. But what has this got to do with your mom? Because his mom is evil. We jumped. The shock of the bell broke our moment together. I'm so glad. Reaching out my hand over him, I whipped the excess of tears on his face. He was such a boy. No, you should have married Chris. Ah, whatever happens, well, we'll get through it together. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. My head still felt a little dizzy. Anyway, time to head to another day of York. York? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> of work. Oh, God. But seriously. <laughs> seriously, I'm gonna cry. <sighs> I couldn't let my emotions control over what I have to do. My job. Not only my job, but another thing. There was an investigation still needed to be done. Yeah, the murderer one. Evidence was missing, and I was determined to find them. I remember it. No, this is the episode, Damien. I, I thought it was another episode. That was, that was weird. Afternoon, Aldo. Mrs. What shall we do today? Also passed looking over the pots and pans. He seemed to be looking for something. I think I'll be needing help, but please study the thing. Tied up the kitchen, if you please. With that said, he left through the kitchen door. Guess I have some free time to myself. Time to investigate. Investigate the body area. Remember the fleshy stench of Errol and Adeline's body to make me sick. It's been, been a it's been about a week now since their horrible deaths. I kneel down to the ground and go in the morning once more. Was it better that I barely knew them? That now I could easily forget them without a guilty conscience? That wasn't true. I did have a guilty conscience. I just... In the back of my mind I knew it's somehow my fault that they died. I'm so sorry. Who, who, who will you remember now? Their family? Their friends? Did they have any family? Or friends? And when did I bother to find out? Am I that terrible a person? If there was something I could do for them, now was to find justice for the dead. Yes. That is what I must do. I headed out the kitchen door. That was all I could find for now and I should be alone by myself. Who knows what I would do if the murderer found me. This is getting just weirder and weirder. The red curtains were the first thing that drew my eye. Stepping onto the stage podium, it was still quite messy from the chest night. Seriously, wires were tangled everywhere. Ah! A truth. <laughs> that sounded awesome. A truth falling face first onto the stage. Wires thick and thin knotted my feet and arms, making it almost impossible for me to get out. Ah, uh, help. Help somebody. I struggled my arms, flailing them useless uselessly. Then an arm reached out, lifting me from the ground. Thanks. It's Damien, right? My boss got. Immediately I shook his arm while pushing him away. It was him. Damien! <laughs> I really liked the sign of Damien, actually. What do you want? I'm trying to help. Yeah, is this? Don't be, don't be. Ah, I hate you. We narrowed our eyes, glaring at each other. I know you have this hate like thing to Damien, and Damien hates you too, and you hate each other, and you have this hate hate relationship. But he, you ask for help. And he went to help you, so he's not an asshole. He's trying to be a good guy. You don't have to be like that. Seriously. Seriously. Falling back into the entanglement of wires again and turn away refusing to look at him. Come on! Putting away our stubborn prize, Damien bent down again to lift me. This time I didn't struggle. Thank you. You were welcome. We avoided eye contact for a moment. I'm glad enough the station so I suggest you to go. Fine. By the way, is this yours? He sent hello a can of hairspray. Shook my head. I, I never use hairspray. That's not mine. Besides, look at the bottom. It's his property of CD. They mean to go look closer look at the can. We were right. Didn't even but suddenly a load suddenly a load commotion sounded in the middle of the dining hall. It was too far for us to see what was happening. 
Damien and I exchanged curious glances. What was going on? Forgot to click. That blade was all a ruckus. Something small dart under the tables. Too fast for me to see. Oh, is it a rat? Although as well as every as everyone was everywhere. Either dodging the small thing or chasing it. It's okay, it's okay, don't run now. Suddenly it dashed out right between my legs. I yelled and tripped, falling to the ground with a thud. Ouch. At first I thought it was a rat, but it was way too big for one. And too small for a cat. Oh, Miss Isis, help us catch the little thing? What? I screamed, something touched my behind. <laughs> Immediately I scrambled up and jumped onto the table. Eee! Not so much, although you encourage it. Skuska, skruska. What? Regardless of my mind, I panic again when the thing breaks down right under us. All the following and dumping it. It's a big! Oh! Hey, no, no, but power up, poco grasso. I don't even know what I said. I don't even know if it was right said. He wrapped the creature in the in a big bundle of cloth. It was too concealed for all of us to see. What is the thing? Did it just... Did it just... Snort? Oh my goodness! <laughs> you have a... Pig! He left the tiny cover revealing the pink thing. Its eyes were barely open now. Tried from tired, tired from the chase. Then I swarm around Aldo, trying to take a closer look at the teacup pig. Such an adorable! Oh, look at it! The hands are even more irresistible than puppy dog eyes. Where did you even get this? I. They went into the grabbing Aldo's shoulder. Aldo didn't answer and talk to you yesterday. You can't bring animals into the cafe. This is the third time you sneak your pig in. <laughs> I am very sorry. The chef lowered his head in shame. Still, I wasn't going to let my curiosity go on unanswered. But Aldo, where in the world did you get the little guy anyway? <laughs> I was visiting farmer markets all over town last week. I was only looking for some veggies, but then I saw a pan full of small piglets. Take up piglets. They were so small to be given to pork manufacturers, especially this one. And if they didn't bought it, the farmer would have put him down. Nothing, a little hammer's Lealdo <laughs> leaned down to tickle the bed, we smiled watching the piglets spin in the light. And I realized something. Was a deep cup pig while you were gone from the cafe for someone? Aldo nodded. My landlady doesn't allow animals, so I brought him here, temporarily. But he's not allowed here too, so I don't know what to do. What's his name? I, I actually haven't given a name yet. Well, come on. Everybody back to work. Yours, big cousin, not more. Enough trouble as it is. We have to set up all the tables again. And night hours start in less than two hours. Clapping his hands, we all shoot our mouths, scrambling ourselves to get back to work. David is actually a nice guy. All the bowed again in apology as they may get a private scolding in the kitchen. We were absolutely smitten with the little thing, but it looks like we'll never see it again. Ah, <sighs> at least investigation and then on a good note today. Yeah, we know Aldo is not the killer, which I'm very happy about. Another cafe at the day was over. Honestly though, I didn't want to go home. Or what home did I have anyway? The parents don't want me and they all concern about this me moving out of their house. <sighs> Maybe I should go back inside. I'm leaving a little early. I'm not gonna call Balin. Balin can die. Go back and find Aldo. <laughs> Aldo? This is what you doing here. Give me another mini game. I don't know how could I help you win anything. Aldo was busy mixing cake butter, probably for tomorrow. I started looking around. I was so useless. What's the matter? Huh? You want to talk about it? I shook a no. Aldo smiled, coming over and patting my head. Then smile for me. I don't like frowns. You see? I pulled aside my cheeks, smiling. There, now that's a good girl. Whatever is bothering you, know this. You are young. Your life's ahead of you. And you can always come here to get free foods from me, okay? <laughs> I nodded. Wow, that cheered me up! And it wasn't even meant for me! <laughs> Aldo, you're magical! You're like the best guy ever. 
best chef ever, pasta seer ever, you're the best character in Autumn Games ever. I don't know how to get to my home anymore. I didn't even need in the first place. Oh, that was fast! There you go. The living room was empty, and yet the light is on. Oh, darling, you're home. A little woman stepped out into the light. My mouth gave open in surprise. You were the woman, right? Mrs. Michaels, what are you doing here? Oh, darling, of course I would come. I'll find out what happened. You did? I looked down, a little ashamed. Mr. Mike, Mrs. Michaels reached for my face, tickling up my chin so that I would look up at her. Oh, poor thing. I think it's time I'll tell you something. Mrs. Michaels brought me over to the living room couch, plodding me down like I was the guest in her house. You are a very special girl, Isis. Did you know that? I am. Oh, yes! So it was special that these very bad people called red blocks have been after you, have been after your life ever since you were born. What? Shh, shh, shh. She playfully tapped my nose lightly with her finger. And so I took it upon myself to hide you and let you grow up in a normal environment and happy childhood. So it didn't turn out that way, considering your horrible parents. Oh, someone is talking about it! Finally! So you're the woman they were talking about. My, Mrs. Ch Michaels laughed, pulling my cheeks. I don't know if I said that, but I was expecting this. Why, Jess, my darling, I've been taking care of you ever since you were born. And really, I am so sorry for what happened. She took my hand in, her, in hers, grasping them tightly. I never imagined they would do anything like that to you. And if I had known sooner, I would have scooped you up and brought you to live with Balin and I. I flushed as she broke up. Balin. Oh my god. I was so worried about him. His line cut off in the middle of our conversation. Would you like to know about my feelings for him? Of course, Mrs. Michaels noticed. Was there something you'd like to tell me there? Uh, well, well, actually, I just like to let you know that i like, you know, in love with, with Balin. My son? How did you? Oh, darling, it was so obvious. Balin talked non-stop about you all the time, and the way you looked at each other, it was much made in heaven. No! <sighs> my chest filled with joy and words. So, so you, I would love to have you as my daughter, dear. The woman ended up her arms swinging as I eagerly embraced her in hug. Yeah, we are having good, good relationship here, with the mother and I. Easy, I mean. But Balin hates her mother, and... Balin, being a crybaby, being a coward, being whatever you want to be, that he actually is, he's not stupid. Well, he is kind of stupid, but not that old stupid. So, I really believe that if he doesn't trust his mother, it's because of something important. Not like Isis. No, 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 no. He's not like that. It's, it's, it's not. Just Balin and I will not will have a happy... <laughs> what? Balin and I would have a happy, big family. Family. Mrs. Michaels. Yes, dear. Where are my parents? She kissed my forehead, tapping my nose again. <gasps> she killed them. You don't have to worry about them anymore. They're gone. Forever. There was something out about her mind. Yeah, I knew it. She killed them. I could have put my finger on it. She killed them. It's obvious. But I knew one thing for sure. Balan and I will be together, and that was all that matter. You know, I don't blame Isis, because I've had that kind of shitty parents. I really wouldn't care. I would be like, I care now, because I'm really in a third person story. But if I wouldn't, I would be like, oh, maybe she killed them. Meh, whatever. Yeah, so I don't blame her. I was in bed, frankly with worry. Balan still had an answer on my calls and text back. I asked Mrs. Michaels where he was, but she said he was out. Oh, where? Maybe he was hunting. My phone. Flipping it over, I gasp in horror. Come to cafe or he dies. Whoa, what? He was an unknown number. I stiffened, realizing who I'm asking from. The murderer. Alright. Jumping on my head, I race on the house to meet my fate. Oh, what? 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 Why did you do this to me? First, first Chris, and now, and now you uh, stupid cliffhangers. All right, so trick thirteen. This was Cafero chapter 
six. I still am thinking about this, and no one will, no one will erase that from my memory ever, ever, really. I hate myself so much. I'll see you later. We are not gonna get killed for as much of us. I hate is is if getting killed in this game is a thing. We are not getting killed. Definitely not. I'm gonna do better than for this. Yeah, definitely. So I'll see you guys in the next one. And sorry for being mad at everything. I really love Christmas. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.